it's starting to get a lot wetter and colder out in the lakes at the moment and I've been getting a lot of questions from you asking how to stay warm when you're out walking and what I've done is I've got together all the things that I take with me so as you can see I'm more of a layers person so I like to have something for each occasion before we get into this though I do want to say that this isn't a guide this is just what I do and I've already seen posts on Facebook lately where the mountain rescue have been called out to rescue people which accidents happen I get that but some things are easily avoidable and if you're heading up into cold conditions you should be prepared for it because it's just selfish otherwise because it's just not fair on the volunteers that come and save you so there's sort of two methods that I've seen when I've been out walking there's people that take one or two big layers like big coats or the way that I like to do it is by taking a lot of smaller layers with walking on the hills what you're basically trying to do is stay warm and stay dry so there's pretty much two ways that you can get wet that's by sweating and by the rain and with the layers you can sort of adapt to the weather conditions so if it's raining you put a raincoat on and get yourself warmer in smaller increments with layers it sounds a bit counterintuitive but you want to have on enough layers to be cold enough to not sweat but warm enough that you're not cold so it's finding that right balance because there's sort of a few different steps with walking there's the climb up and then you stop at the top and you're using the most energy on the climb up and producing the most heat so that's when you're going to be sweating the most so that's when you're going to have the least layers on but when you stop to take in the views I'm mainly a landscape photographer so I stop for a long time so when I do stop I pile on all the layers trap all the heat in and then when I start walking again I'll take the layers off we'll start with the base layers so if it's really cold I'll wear a vest I like this because it's a breathable fabric which means that the sweat gets out easy and air gets in so it sort of helps keep you cool and dry and on the bottom half, I have a pair on now, but I really don't want to be on a video just wearing long johns. But on the bottom half, I'd wear long johns. Another thing that I like to do with these, if it's really cold, is I like to tuck these into my socks. And what that does, it sort of makes a onesie on the bottom half under your trousers. And it just means that the wind doesn't come up your leg and then it's just a bit warmer and it's really not a good look but it's really nice to wear these another big thing is a decent pair of boots the ones that I wear are they're a winter boot which means that they're quite hard you can clip on a crampon and these ones are waterproof which makes a huge difference because wet feet is just horrible and they just get cold a lot quicker I also like with the, like the harder ankle bit, it's harder to twist an ankle and underneath those I like to wear thick pairs of socks, I sometimes wear two or three pairs of those depending on how many I can fit and yeah that's just a nice comfort thing as well. So we'll tuck our long johns into the socks. never really cared much for fashion anyway so we got our socks long johns decent pair of boots vest then similar to the vest we've got this um it's a t-shirt which is made out of that stretchy material polypropylene and it just lets the sweat out and the air in i'd recommend maybe taking two sets of like bottom layer t-shirts if you do get really sweaty it's a good idea to take that off and swap it for a new one that also seems counterintuitive because taking your top off on top of a mountain seems like you're going to get a lot colder but 
it's like an instant warm up when you take off that cold layer. And it also means that your body isn't trying to heat you up, it's just going back into warming you. I've just been putting the video together and I don't think I emphasise this point enough. The reason I'm saying to remove that liquid as soon as possible is as the temperature comes down, um, that water is going to freeze and that's going to bring down your core temperature and it's going to increase the chances of you getting hypothermia. And even before that point, I've always found that when I get colder, I just don't think straight. So there isn't really any good things to come from this happening. So you want to try and avoid it if possible. So remove that base layer and replace it as soon as possible with a fresh one. Or what I tend to do is get moving and get down the hill before anything bad happens. And then on top of that, just a long sleeve version of what I just showed you. And just keeps your arms warm, lets the sweat out and air in. It's a bit of a theme going on here. And then I tend to take a few different versions of that. The good thing about having lots of layers like this is if I'm too cold with just this on, all you need to do is put an extra layer on, turn it up one or two degrees, rather than putting on a big coat and then being too hot. So if you start sweating, take one off. And if you're too cold, put one on. And then on top of that, I tend to have a few sets of hoodies. So this is just a old one. Um, it's nothing fancy but you can roll it up quite small. And then got this gray one, which I'm pretty much always wearing in the videos. And it's something that I've not really talked about in the videos before, but you'll probably see me getting bigger and smaller throughout the day. And it's just because all of this is changing underneath this. And then let's finish off with the coats. I've got a bigger coat as well. What I like to do is screw everything up and tuck it into the hood and then it unwraps quickly and it packs down really small and this is quite a thick coat it's not waterproof but it's nice to have a bigger layer with you as well for when you do stop and for if it is raining I have a rainproof so this one has a hood on it, small zip on the front, and that just keeps the water out. And again with this one, it goes down really small. So takes up barely any room in the bag and it keeps the water out. And then I've also got a windproof, which is even smaller. And all this does is it keeps the wind out doesn't really do much to the temperature but it's good to have say a t-shirt on with this on top for when it's it's quite warm but windy so you can just adapt to the situation and then for the bottom half got some waterproof trousers so just like those They roll up pretty small. Just put them over the top of your trousers. Or uh, you can get waterproof walking trousers, but I found that when they rub together, it's really annoying. So I like to just have them when it's needed. And then another thing is, I think they call these buffs. It's like a tube and a good thing about it is you can just wear it around your neck like that and it keeps the wind off your neck keeps you a bit warmer or if it's really windy spiders if it's really windy you can put it over your face and then you can make it into a balaclava when you combine it with your hat
So it just means that you've got less surface area for the, for the wind to hit and already that feels quite warm. So today is not the day to wear it. But another thing with these, you can turn it into a bit of a hat and just sort of wear it like a bandana and put it over the top. So that has a lot of different uses and it comes in really handy. And like everything else, it's really small. I almost forgot gloves because I, I keep them in my trouser pockets usually. I like these little inner gloves. They're thick enough to keep the wind off and a little bit of the cold, but you can still use your fingers really well. So it's just like you don't have any gloves on. And you can get some where you can get like the touch screen things so you can still use your phone or whatever when you need to. And I tend to have two or three pairs of those. I'll keep them in this pocket down here so that I can just quickly grab them and go. And I take these off and on throughout the day as well. So a lot of the time I'll just wear those, but if the conditions are a lot worse, I also wear these thicker ones. And because these are, well, these are inner gloves, like they're in the name, you can wear them inside the thicker gloves. And it just means that you've now got two layers on your hands and it makes a big difference. And I'm not too sure if it's just because I've got bad circulation or if this happens to everyone, but I get really cold fingertips. Maybe it's because I wear little gloves. But what I tend to do is if, if that happens is I'll shake my arms up and down and it sort of drive the blood back into the end of my fingers. And if you do this with your hands a lot, it keeps the blood going through into your fingers. So that happens even when I wear these, when I think about it, because it happens when I go skiing. But that's a quick and effective way of getting the blood back in and it will sting for a little bit, but it's better than having cold fingers. That's everything that I take though, really. I do have more versions of the same thing. So I've got more long sleeve tops, more t-shirts, and I've got a few more coats. If it's quite a bit colder, I'll take this one as well. This is more of my ski jacket. It's a bit bulky than all the other stuff though. So I'd rather not take this, but if it is going to be cold, it's not an excuse. Just because you can't be asked carrying it doesn't mean you shouldn't take it. So it makes me kind of angry talking about this kind of stuff because a lot of the stuff here is easily avoidable. So that's everything that I take. I don't take all of this every time. You have to use your brain a little bit, check the forecast. And the forecast is often wrong as well. So you need to just stand there at the bottom of the hill and look up and make a decision. Um, I don't really see the bragging rights in doing something just for the sake of it. I've turned back from a lot of things and yeah, you just got to think of the people that are going to pick up the pieces if it does go wrong. Yeah, I'm going to go off on a rant if I stay on that. Some of you also asked about packing the bag. So let's have a quick look with the big stuff. With the coats, what I like to do is I sort of get the front of the coat as if it's being worn. I don't zip it up because I want it to be ready for when I get it out again. And if you just tuck the arms in and we want it to fit inside this hood. So if you tuck it in a little bit like this and at the bottom here, if you pinch it and squeeze it really tight, then you can just tuck that inside and you've got something that's ready to go in your bag. So that'll just slot in. It's unlikely to come loose and it's unlikely to get caught on anything else. So you've taken a big object and made it pretty small. 
and you can do that with everything and yeah it just packs down nice and neatly in the bag and once you got used to doing it this way you can do it quickly do it as neatly as you want and you can take all your equipment pack it down nice and neatly and one other thing is when you're packing your bag this coat is something that i'd use probably at the top not very often so that's going to go in the bottom of the bag whereas the smaller layers that i'm going to go in between throughout the day they're going to go at the top and it just makes it a lot easier because i found that whenever something's a little bit of effort it's less likely to happen so if you can streamline your process you can just have a better day out on the fells but i hope you found this helpful and hopefully you can apply some of these techniques to your equipment for the next time you go out walking and i would recommend that if you are just starting out it might be worth trying to get in touch with someone that has more experience before you head out because things go wrong quickly and even if you do plan it like this it can still go wrong and yeah you just want to be ready for those kind of situations and do everything you can to avoid it i don't want to put anyone off but i think it's important to say that kind of thing because sometimes when i look back at the videos that i've done it looks like an easy day out whereas in real life it was fairly brutal and yeah if you're not prepared for that kind of thing you could be in a lot of trouble and yeah i don't want you to die but i hope you liked the video please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you did and i'll see you next time